Hey guys, how you doing? I recently installed a supercharger on my truck. Let's come around and take a look at that. Boom! What this is right here is a Y-end, or Wee-end, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it's a 177. That's uh, Their base model, I believe, is a 142. And then you get up to the 177, and then from there you get to like the 671, the 871. Those are the really big blowers. The 142 is their kind of smallest base model, 177. Both those are really good street blowers, and this is just a good all-around blower. What's great about the 177 is it's expandable. You have a lot of different pulley options, so this will really support uh, a lot of power. But what we have in my 65C10 is a pretty stock 400 small block. It has an Edelbrock 400 uh, cam, which I think is... It's, uh, 114 114 duration at 50 and a 442 442 lift so it's just kind of slightly above stock uh, the heads are stock and we got a pretty good exhaust system and an 800 carburetor fully built custom blower carb um, so other than that it's got forged pistons but the crank and the rods are stock they're cast so with that knowledge we've got basically a warmed over 400 small block with forged pistons with a Wien 171 or 177 and what I want to do a video on here is to explain how to set these things up safely so you don't mess up your motor because that's the worst feeling you put a lot of power on there you don't set it up correctly and you blow up your motor that is the worst feeling nobody wants I don't want that for anybody so we're going to go inside and go over the documentation uh, for this blower what they have online and what uh, the manufacturer recommends to set up uh, said engine like this. They have charts that even cover the engine sizes, compression ratio. As far as compression ratio, what we know about this engine, it is somewhere about 8.5 to 8.8 .8, uh, to 1. That's all I, the information I have. I know it's under 9, but above 8. So we're going to go somewhere about 8.5 to 8.8. .8. So let's go ahead and go inside and see what uh, Wyan has to help us out with this. All right, we are back inside. We are in front of the laptop, and uh, this is the information we have on the internet. And like I went over out in the garage, we've got a small block Chevy. It's a 400. We've got forged pistons, stock rods, and crank. Here's our compression ratio. Here's that Edelbrock cam I was telling you about, and the uh, duration and lift specs. The duration is at 50. And I forgot to show you out there uh, in the garage measuring the blower pulleys. Uh, the upper one on the blower is a 3.48 inch and the lower one is 6 inch. Basically you just measure the diameter of the pulley, take a tape measure, it's just that simple. So, now that we have all this information, okay, we're going to go over here to Wyan and we're going to see what they say. Alright, you go through all this stuff and the first thing that they talk about is compression ratio boost pressure. So they say your engine's compression ratio, which we know is 8.5 to about 8.8 8 to 1, that's the static compression. When you add your boost, you get effective compression ratio. And if you go down here at the bottom, they say engines, street engines with 92 octane should be somewhere around 12 to 1 effective ratio. So that is their recommendation if you want to avoid detonation. You know, you don't want to melt, melt your pistons, overheat your engine, uh, bend your rods, mess up your crank, any of that kind of stuff. So they're recommending 12 to 1, and our truck will be street use. I plan to tow with that truck, really use it. Uh, I like to drive my stuff. I don't build it so insanely. It's just unreliable or horrible gas mileage, yada, yada. So here we go. Effective ratio. Now here they're going to outline compression ratios. Here's 8, 5 to 1. Here's 12 to 1. That's what they recommend, remember? Now, to get 12 to 1 off an engine with 8.5 to 1 static, they're saying 6 pounds of boost. So, we don't want to make more than 12, 6 pounds of boost to stay in the safe range. Now, if we are 8.8 8 to 1, we're somewhere in between 12 to 12.5. So, we'll say about 12.4. That's still relatively safe because they say if you got detonation issues you can use boost retard mechanisms to fix that so and we haven't installed that yet so if we run into that issue we can install that so I'd feel safe even taking it to like a 13 to 1 because 
really to get that full boost you got to be romping on it full rpm and I, I just don't see the truck really getting it that much so here's their different sizes that they have for the small block chevy the 142 and 177 and oh yeah there's the 250 but mainly the 670 671 and the 871 we're at the 177 all right we're going to continue to scroll down because there's more charts and more things we need to analyze we're also going to talk about carburation now here on this chart we know we have an 800 out there they're saying with a 177 with a chevy big block 454 they got 800 but then they say small block 350 is 700 we're at a 400 so we have about an 800 and I have this carburetor also that's probably going to go on there at 750. Either one of them is right there where it needs to be, it's perfect. So we're good there. So far so good. What is next? Here they talk about their cams. So as I told you, mine was a 400 cam from Edelbrock. Um, and this is Lunati's lowest level blower cam it's a 223 223 and the lift is pretty much the same as ours but they've got a little more duration so and they're saying this is excellent cam for a truck with a stock engine mounting a supercharger that's where we're at so i guess if i want to change cam and get a little more power uh this would probably give me about 10 to 15 more horses just adding that duration and it's still you know pretty much idle to 5500 we're not gonna worry about that right now i think we're good with what we got okay Here's where it gets good. There's 142, 177, right? But these are Ford engine numbers. So let's keep going. We got a 177, and these are Chevy engines. So this is the chart we need to look at. Okay. So we're at a 400. I don't know if I covered this before, but when I took my blower, my uh, pulleys, and I looked at the chart on them, this combination yields a 72% overdrive or 1.72 drive ratio. So that's where we're currently at. So if you got a 1. Uh, yeah, 72 right here and a 400. So right now we should be at about 4.7 pounds of boost. <clears throat> now remember they said to get a 12 to 1 effective ratio, the highest you really want. You want about 6 pounds. There's your 6 pounds right there. 6.2 for 400. So, to get 6 pounds of boost on a 400 to get your 12 to 1 effective ratio, we want to be at an 85% uh, overdriven or 1.85 uh, drive ratio. So, let's go back to our pulley chart. Now, we have a 6 inch pulley. And a 3.48, right? So that's where I was telling you we had a 0.72. 1.72. Sorry, I didn't cover that earlier. Now to get to my 6 pounds of boost, that 86%, I need to go to 3.23. Okay? You see that? Here's where we were. 3.48, and then we want to be at 3.23. To get an 86% and that 80 or 85% or is it right here 85 86 6.2 we could go to this 87% but this requires the lower pulley and the lower pulley is like $350 but if I do this one I change just the upper pulley which is a lot cheaper see these are the the 7 inch, the 6.5, and the 6 inch are the lower pulleys, the big ones. The ones that attach to the crank, those are expensive. And these are the smaller ones. We're going to go with this one. Now there's 6 rib and 10 rib. I have 10 rib out there. So I need the 6892, which is $154. So for $154, going up that uh, about a pound and a half is probably going to end at about... I'd say probably about 30 horsepower. So $154 is a good deal for 30 horsepower. So again, uh, I just wanted to kind of go over. This is the things, the things you need to look at to make sure you set up your engine properly so that you don't damage it. Now, six pounds of boost on the street is, 
is plenty. I might take just a strip. Now, if I wanted to race this truck, none of this stuff really matters because you should be totally uh, more power oriented. But this is, I wanted more, I wanted good low end torque, good power, but I don't want to be shredding the tires and racing people. I mean, it, geez, it's a long bed pickup truck. So I wanted good low end power. I wanted it to be really reliable. So our goal here was to set up engineered reliable power using the manufacturer's recommendations to get us the most power but within the safety range. So knowing that I have pulleys that are putting me below the safety range so I'm really safe and knowing I can squeeze out a little bit of power, a little more power for $154, that seems like a good deal to me. Um, there's a couple more things I need to do, uh, some adjustments on the carbs, and um, I need to, no actually the distributor is good because based on what Wyan says, they're saying uh, 32 to 34 degrees total advance is good for these blower setups and that's what I'm at. So, uh, good luck out there. If you have any questions, let me know. I hope this helps explain that process of choosing the right pulleys for your engine. Uh, the information is out there on Wyan's website. They're actually owned by Holly. So go to Holly's website, look for the supercharger section or wine section, and go to documentation. And the pulley chart I actually got uh, <clears throat> from Jegs. So there you have it. Good luck out there. Happy hot rodding.